All right, the meeting is now being recorded. Thanks. Great. Is the um, applicant for sunset fearing here? Yeah, yeah, we can just uh, call the meeting to order. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Um, Karen, you're muted right now. Hello. So I'm calling the meeting to order. I'm Judith, Judith Strayer, and as chair of the Amherst Local Historic District Commission, I'm calling the meeting to order at 3.03 p.m. on Monday, November 7th, 2022. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. Um, also in, a, in, in accordance with Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A subsection 20, signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. So I'll now take attendance. Um, as you hear your name called, please um, unmute yourself and answer. Uh, Bruce Colden. Here I am. Greta Wilcox. Here. Um, Karen Winter. Here. Nancy Ratner. Here. Steve Bloom. Here. Nicole Miller. And I'm Judy Strayer. I'm here. Um, do we need, do we have members of the public that will be making comment that we know of? Uh, does not appear so, no. Okay, so I won't make that. Okay, um, so our first issue is a revisit of Sunset Fearing. Yep. Great, so I'll give a little bit of an intro and also invite um, Tom and Jonathan into the room okay. here. Um, so as most of you know, the uh, local historic district uh, reviewed and issued a certificate of appropriateness for this uh, project at the corner of Sunset Ave and Fearing Street um, in December of 2021. Hi, Tom. Um, the, uh, the project has subsequently gone through the whole ZBA, Zoning Board of Appre Appeals review process, and like any relatively complicated uh, development project. There's been some you know, changes over, made to the project over the past, uh, just under a year at this point, 11 months. Um, so the applicants, one of the conditions in our certificate of appropriateness, if you remember 11 months ago, the uh, one of the conditions was that the applicants to return to the commission after um, the Zoning Board of Appeals process to review any any modifications made to the plan set that was submitted uh, in December. And so that's what we're doing today. And you should have all uh, received in the packet um, a, a kind of annotated drawing that shows the modifications that were made, but we'll run through those today. Um, and just as kind of a reminder about what kind of your purview is today, the you're de you're deciding on whether the changes are minor in nature um, and kind of keeping in spirit with the original certificate of appropriateness that was issued and and the um, you know design intent and then you know there is some room if the applicants are agreeable if there's you know slight modifications to be made you we could you know consider looking at those now. And then if for whatever reason, any of the changes rise to the occasion of being really, you know, sig so significant that there's no resolution today, um, there could be a, a requirement for a new application to be submitted. But um, so that's the goal for this afternoon's meeting. And uh, Tom and Jonathan, if you have anything to add, uh, feel free. No, I think I think that was great. Uh, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson, um, out of Amher uh, Bacon Wilson and Amherst, here with Jonathan Salvan from Kuhn Riddle to discuss what, what we think are minor changes. I think Ben did a great job giving um, the background. I mean, most of you remember we were here last year. Subsequently, we went through Zoning Board of Appeals approval. We, in fact, received the approval um, to pass the appeal period, I think. 
you know, the, the, this is a Barry Roberts project to his credit. I think he did a really good job of working with the neighborhood, um, particularly to save one of the trees, to save the houses, um, and I think to ultimately have a, a, a really good project. So Jonathan, I'll turn it over to you and let you walk through the changes, um, which we think are in the spirit of what your certificate of appropriateness was. And, and so we would ask at the end of this, just to find them de minimis and, and allow us to, to move on. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jonathan. Great. Can everyone hear me? Yes. I would like to share my screen. So let's see if this is gonna work. I could set up before that. Can you all see the image of the of the six buildings that will be on the the site? Yes. I can. Yes. yes. Great. Okay. So the the image that you're seeing at the moment this is this is the sort of view from above that that uh, uh, was presented uh, about you know eleven months ago or or so, um, and so I've I've tried to do a, a side by side comparison um, noting items that have changed from from a year ago to now. And so I'm now going to scroll down an image here. Um, this uh, image uh, was created based upon the, the the final kind of approval. I, the thing I should say here is try not to pay attention to the to the trees because we I didn't keep the landscaping up. And it, this is really to focus on the architecture and try to, um, uh, you know, focus on what's changed. So there's what you're seeing in the way of the trees and the landscaping does not necessarily reflect what was ever what was in the the um, zoning approval drawings. They were much more detailed. There were fences. There's a whole uh, program of of uh, outdoor space in the back. Um, but to focus on changes, <clears throat> one of the, the big changes is this drive off uh, sunset was eliminated. There's just simply a, a kind of fireplace uh, and fire truck turnaround. I hope you can see my my cursor too as I point at things and let me know if you don't. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of walk through the buildings from A through F. So starting at um, A, uh, one of the, the things that was missing from our initial presentation were some of the trim that would actually be put on the building such as corner boards. And so now building A plus all the, the other buildings are shown with, with their full trim packages. Um, both A and B, and uh, for that matter, D, which is back here. Um, these are duplex uh, buildings with two single family units in, in one building. Um, and the primary change was, it seemed better to group uh, a series of windows here on the side that corresponds to the, uh, the kind of dining space as opposed to the divided up window that we were showing previously. So I'm just gonna flip back. Um, we had uh, previously, separated windows it worked better for the kitchens and 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 for the spaces inside to, to group them as a triple window okay um, moving to building c uh, this is a uh, multi-unit building uh, with two four bedroom units sort of off the front here on the left hand side of the the um building and then a three bedroom unit here at the corner kind of facing our, our view um, and so that's a change from the last time. Uh, previously, as I flip back, the all the unit types were the same. Um, there was more similarity between the, the two sides of the building, although they weren't exactly the same. Um, the other changes, we did show sort of a dormer here, or excuse me, a bay here at the, the second floor. Um, it wasn't doing a, a lot of advantage for us in the floor plan. Uh, so that got simplified in that area. Jonathan, can you toggle back? Sure. Yeah, in the pre in the previous view, there's I have a view uh, coming up where it's clear. It, it was kind of obscured okay. by the trees a year ago. Thank you. But we can we can see that clearer in one of the, the subsequent ones. Okay. Uh, moving back with D, we talked about because the changes are like A and B. Uh, e is a rather large change. It was a multi-unit uh, building like C or similar to C. So I'm going to flip back as you can see there was. Uh, kind of three bays along the front. Um, this was scaled back to uh, a building that has the same massing as the uh, as the A, B, D buildings. In fact, both E and F now have the same massing. They have different number of units inside, uh, but the detailing and massing is is similar. And uh, just gonna make sure I didn't 
miss anything? I'm trying to read my own notes real quick here. Yes. So now we're going to look at this from a different angle, unless folks want to pause with a question. OK. So another one of the images that we showed last time was kind of a street view uh, standing sort of at the corner of Sunset and Fear and kind of looking both up uh, Sunset and um, into the site somewhat. Um, so this, again, was the uh, original image as presented uh, a year ago. And scrolling down. Oops, that's not right. I did that too quickly. There we go. Um, this is the, the current image. So again, you see the, uh, the, the ganged up window of a triple window here, um, as opposed to the two split windows. Uh, same thing happened in building B, but it's kind of obscured by the plantings uh, on building B. And then again, just trying to highlight that change uh, to the three bedroom unit uh, in building C. Again, the same process. This is the, the image that was shown a year ago uh, of primarily the, the, the building C unit. Um, here you've got a better view of that, that uh, bay at the second floor. Um, and then scrolling down one more. There we go. Uh, so the change in the fenestration here at the top floor. Um, and I should, I, this is a detailed enough view that you can distinguish some of the uh, changes in. We vary the, um, the, the way the light pattern works in the windows so that all the buildings don't have the same light pattern. That's what this note is kind of referring to. So here we have kind of a two over two expression on this building, um, whereas the, uh, the A and B buildings have a six over one. Um, and we varied some of the details like the, the size of the louvre um, in addition to making that change to the, to the uh, three bedroom unit here at the end. That is in brief, the, the, the changes. And uh, I'd gladly answer any questions that folks would have. Does anybody have any questions? Nancy? So could you just orient me? How do you come into these units? Uh, Where's the driveway? Sure. Let me go back to the overview. Just, there we go. So there's a drive that it's, it's oops, let's go to the, is that the right one? Where's the correct one? Give me a minute. To, there we go. Um, there is a drive off Fearing Street. There's There were two existing driveways into the two properties that, that make up this development. One uh, was approximately where we were showing uh, a drive uh, a year ago in this location. And then there's another one um, on the right hand side that comes off Fearing Street. Uh, and the primary or the, the access to the site is off Fearing Street in the approved zoning, uh, zoning board approved drawings. This drive has been eliminated. There's a little kind of T-shaped uh, fire truck turnaround in its place, but at the, at, at the street, there won't be this, this curb cut. And the parking for these units will all be in that central area between the six houses? Yes. Thanks. Any other is questions? The, yeah, um, this is Steve. Is there a view of what will be seen on fairing? I do not have that view today. I think we may have had some elevation views that show the two end units. You'll primarily see the end of the A unit and the, and the uh, F unit, which uh, if I scroll the right one, um, both, both have approximately this elevation. Jonathan, let me let me try to share my screen for a yep. moment. If you don't mind. Yeah, let me stop. Hold on one second. Hope you got it. I just stole it from you. No ah, offense. You thief. <laughs> so here's the, so these are the updated ones. Um, these are with all the changes, with the appropriate landscaping, with the retention of the tree that currently exists at the corner of Fearing and Sunset. And so this is that one access way uh, off of Fearing in essentially the same location as it currently exists. I can try to, I've got some other renderings. This is one from inside the site towards the back. And maybe what I can do is 
don't want to make anybody ill, but okay. So this is there you that, go. That's a good one. That overview, right? So here is that mm -hmm. what Jonathan was talking about, how that no longer goes all the way up. Access comes in here, fire truck turnaround to allow them to get in back up and then leave the site if they needed to. Sidewalk continues along the entirety of the front. You've got the landscaping in the front of these units. You've got landscaping in the rear of these units, landscaping in the rear of these units. Parking here, we also, we've added a, uh, a lay, I think landscape architects call it. Um, it's a sidewalk stairs to get back so that the folks here and here can either go, this is a completely accessible path um, so that someone uh, in a wheelchair could get all the way back to this area where we have the community gardens and the, the play area in the back. So, and this is just turning it 90 degrees. I can continue to, this is the front. You've got the gates, the landscaping um, that are being proposed. This is in that back parking lot all the way to the south, looking at the university towers. Yeah, the university it. towers look a lot better in those pictures than they do in real life. <laughs> I, you, I wish well, they looked like that. That we can't fix for you. Yeah, we're doing our best. Uh, yeah. This this is on Sunset. This is on the east side of Sunset. So this is um, that third unit. This is where the driveway used to be, but you'll see that it's just sidewalk all the way down. This is essentially um, uh, from the north westerly area this is looking back at the community garden and uh, that, over um, that ramp the play area yeah about where the ramp is this is uh, again on the north westerly side looking back at the structures same thing from the west looking back at the structure this is that photo rendering that i first showed you this is from the south west looking into the site uh, this one is, this is that LA that I talked about. So this is in the parking area from the, the, um, the play areas here, the, um, community garden is there. This is an aerial view of the same aerial view. This is another one from Fearing. So you'll see, and I believe these, these are hollies. I think one of the requests from the Zoning Board of Appeals was, to make them a pollinator species. So we've got pollinators inside the site, but we said, sure, we can do that. So this is what you're gonna see. Um, and we've talked to UMass about this as well. And then this is just a little further up. I'm happy to go keep going, but you, I think you get the sense of- Sure, thank you. Uh, sure, that we're looking to do. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? I see Bruce's hand. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Well, uh, uh, I, I'm always um, a fan of taking all questions of clarification before we get into commentary. And it seems as though that's happened. So I wasn't really asking a question so much as, uh, as uh, uh, um, uh, making a comment. Um, it seems to me that um, this project, the design of this project has, uh, has has improved, uh, has evolved uh, positively on its uh, trip through the various uh, um, permitting agencies that you've uh, visited in the last uh, 10 months. Um, so, uh, and, and that uh, design evolution is something I think this commission should be um, educating itself to understand and appreciate because we will always be the first well, I do guess I don't really know that, but it appears to me that we will likely always be the first cab off the uh, land use regulatory ramp rank. So we should get used to watching and uh, how complex projects like this evolve uh, as they move forward. So I think, yes, there has been an evolution. Uh, my personal opinion is that it's a positive evolution. Um, I um, I've always been used to, because of previous experience on planning boards and so forth, to look at de minimis changes as being actually fairly small as well as de minimis. 
Um, but I think these are, uh, I'm not a lawyer, of course, uh, so I'm imagining that I have to understand uh, that the, the legal notion of de minimis doesn't necessarily mean um, small and, and barely noticeable because clearly there are some changes here that are not small and they are definitely noticeable. But I think that they're um, in keeping with uh, the spirit that which the design was originally presented to us and which we engage with and on the which I think we based our certificate of appropriateness. Um, I, I, I think that the the, 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 the removal of that driveway on sunset is a good thing. I guess we accepted it initially, partly because A, that wasn't our purview to be looking at driveways quite so much. I mean, I suppose yes, <coughs> we could, but there were driveways all up and down the street. So another driveway there was not inconsistent and arguably was consistent with the, the streetscape. But I think for the purposes of this development, um, it is probably improved by not having it there. Uh, uh, Jonathan, as I understand it, the, uh, the bulk of the uh, paved connection which went between the street and the rear parking has been retained for a fire truck turnaround. Is that correct? Yeah, there's, there's a, a piece that's long enough to facilitate that, that turnaround. Okay. I, I suspect that it was not just my, but, but the landscape uh, designers and civil engineers assumption that, that the town would initially, through the fire department, request both of those, uh, those drives. And we were pleasantly surprised when, when um, they suggested that we could reduce to one. Well, my guess is that depending on who lives in those houses and, 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 and what their kids are, if they have kids and so forth, that that turnaround would turn into a very nice uh, half-court basketball. Probably but I so. guess uh, you're not going to put a, <laughs> you're going to let that evolve rather than promise anybody that A, it will be there disturbing their peace or will be there um, um, uh, giving their kids uh, something to do outside the house. Uh, I think the, uh, the variations to the massing and so forth are, in my view, uh, either neutral or positive. Um, and the, the change to the large, uh, the central unit at the rear is probably the, the, the thing that is the biggest um, candidate for questioning whether it's de minimis or not. My view is that... Um, in, it is in keeping uh, with this challenging proposition of trying to put a, a certain number of units at scale into this uh, site and the number of units. And I know when you first came to us, I think you had fewer units and in conversation with us, I don't know whether we were triggered it or, or what, but it happened during the course of your meeting with us, you, I think, increased the number of units. And, and I think we all thought that was an improvement. So um, th that's uh, unchanged. So I think changing the mass of that one, particularly since it's to the rear and not on the street, is um, also in my view, I think, uh, de minimis. So my comment then is that I, uh, um, I, I think uh, I would support uh, a proposition that these are de minimis uh, in the uh, so far as the spirit and the uh, and the and the uh, original application is concerned, um, and I'll leave it at that for the moment because others may or may not agree with what I just said. Anybody else like to comment? I, I myself will comment that I, I do think the changes are well done and um, and I, I like the smaller massing of the central building in the back um, as well very much. Greta? I also really like the moving of the driveway. I think that was a nice change. Any other comments or questions before we... Karen has got a hand up. Oh, Karen, sorry. Karen, I should say. Um, yes, I'm. I'm very pleased. I think this is kind of the the thing that we were looking for. I think it is going to appeal to young families and professionals and students, and will 
uh, be a nice addition at the end of sunset. So I, I'm very pleased. Thank you. Great. Are we ready to? Well, that's what my hand's oh. for. Oh, your hand? Okay. <laughs> I was I was going to move. Uh, I uh, see what the frame of that. Uh, move that uh, um, the commission finds the uh, the changes uh, submitted in the final design, um, and I guess you would cite the documentation numbers and dates, um, though. Uh, significant in appearance are considered de minimis to insofar as they accord uh, fully with the uh, um, original um, spirit of the uh, approved project of the project as approved ben does that cover it yeah yeah i think that works would somebody like to second that? Karen? A second. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Um, should we, can we vote now? Yes. OK. Bruce Coldham? Aye. Rita Wilcox? Yes. Karen Winter? Yes. Nancy Ratner? Yes. Nicole Miller? Yes. Steve Bloom? Yes. Um, Judy Strayer, I also vote yes. So. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Jonathan. I'll um, follow up through the OpenGov portal and um, you should be able to get your building permit now. So that sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> thank you very right. much. Good seeing you. And good thank, thank Barry for his work in moving those houses around i have no house number two is way over near linda manor i think so it's it's a, it's a long way from home it is mm -hmm. but it'll stay in there for a while yeah, yeah absolutely or just there okay so long bye bye great, great. thanks everyone you may have noticed, just to clarify, you may have noticed that they uh, there's been some earth moving over there already on Sunset Fearing. They they have a they they received a conditional permit just to uh, start pouring the foundations, but they weren't going to start building the actual structures until they received this approval. So they've that's just what they were doing there now was the foundation work, but now they can get their final building permit through this process. So. Yeah. Nice, nice landscaping, I thought. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think the ZBA spent hours, uh, maybe Karin might have been there, but they spent hours and hours talking about Hollies versus Arborvitae. And I know it, uh, <laughs> they finally settled on Holly, Holly Shrub. So. so that's the evolution of the zoning board. Uh, yeah. Who from Arborvitae to Hollies in 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> exactly. That's progress. Yeah. Great. So, I think our next item was um, Steve. You wanted to. Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, show you some things that I've done on the possible LHDC expansion study. I created two files. I don't know if, how to get to them. One, I guess, is of materials and one is pictures. Uh, ben, can you bring them up or? Yes, I can do that. Yeah. Let's start with the pictures and then um, just so people can see. Steve, I think I noticed that there was a a, a duplicate in there, and, and yeah, and, no, and I the... fixed that. Yeah. Oh, you did. Was, okay. Um, yeah, I sent it on to the second um, batch. I, I don't know if Ben added it or not. Yeah, I think it was three fourteen. Um, I didn't plus. see it when I looked uh, around yeah, the no, time I, today. I, yeah, no, I sent it on, so I don't know mm. if it's there or not. I actually sent a couple today as well. I don't know if they're there. Anyway. So you can just, um, 
I took photographs. There's 20 houses under consideration mm -hmm. and I took pictures of all of them. And so okay. you can, yeah. you, know, you guys are all familiar with them. I, I that's St. Bridget's. Yeah. So you can avail yourself of those. Um, can I just make a comment, Steve? Sure. Um, one thing that was 346 had been added to it. It's like a kind of a small building behind 336. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I remember. Look at that. Okay, well, that brings it up to 21 or 20, yeah. you know, or it could be 22. There's two buildings at the St. Bridget's uh, property. Yeah. And also some people, I don't know if 12 Halleck is included or not. The main thing is, um, I, if you go to the materials, I have a list of all the properties. Um, mm -hmm. Can we do that? Anyway, I just want to let you know that if you guys, oh, here we go. So go to uh, list of prospective properties, please. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Um, so basically, originally, I've been like, I've always been, I was involved with the LHD for Lincoln Sunset. And when I, like I said at the last meeting, we didn't include the properties along Kendrick Park. It was kind of a tacit deal. And those properties, except for one, are absentee, are owned by landlords and their rentals. But I've had a change of heart because um, Susanna sent me a bunch of material, Susanna Fabing. And I, that perimeter along uh, Kendrick Park is slated for commercial development um, down the line. So the real question I had, if I could scroll down, it, there's 20 prob, uh, properties under study or adjacent to the existing eight uh, LHD, 19 of the properties are from the same general time period and of the same general architectural styles of those in the existing LHD. 13 of the 20 properties are zoned for BL for commercial use and the other seven, which are currently zoned RG are being targeted for rezoning for commercial development, except for one property, the existing North Lincoln suspect uh, LHD 192 properties uh, in all is owned exclusively RG. And my question is, and I may have answered it for myself, is that seeing that the zoning is so different from the existing LHD, is it appropriate for the BL properties under study to be added to it? Steve. And since the, I'm sorry, and since the zoning and designated use of the properties under study are commercial and not residential, would it be more appropriate to try to create an entirely new LHD? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of going that route? So I actually wrote, I'm sorry to keep, go ahead, I'm sorry. Just a question of clarification, Steve. Uh, sure. in your, you said being targeted for rezoning to commercial development. Now, uh, that was confusing to me because there is a, a zone which is commercial. Um, but I, do you mean that they're being rezoned as commercial? Or I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not, because I, I don't think I, so. I think that's I mean BL, still, BL, yeah. BL, not yes, commercial. yes. So I'm it might be good to, uh, to in if this is going, uh, if this is going to have a wider audience than just us, um, using the phrase, uh, commercial development, um, um, I would say perhaps business development because then it doesn't, uh, trigger okay. that confusion about whether it's a, a, another uh, because commercial zones are but there's a few of them in there but then they're, they're not they're not in that area so okay, okay. business I, I development agree. i think is better yeah i'm not i'm pretty imprecise i have to gen i'm not a i'm a layman at all this so well this so am i strength oh well, no so anyway here's my thing is that um i think it'd be difficult to get a step i would personally philosophically like to have it be a new LHD, like a, you know, a business LHD as opposed to connected to what is a residential LHD. Yeah. But politically, I don't know if we could get the current town council to authorize a study committee and with town resources so strained already. So I'm thinking that I actually wrote to Chris Skelly, who's the head of the Massachusetts Historical Commission asking him these very questions and hopefully he'll get back to me. I haven't heard. I wrote him last week asking him which he would, which way he would recommend and what are the advantages and disadvantages. The reason why I think this is actually kind of imperative is I, you know, all the, all these buildings are from the 1800s and they can all be knocked down um, even if zoning has changed. And the only way to, and the only thing that the historical society can do 
is do a one year demolition delay. And so if we want to have any chance of saving these buildings from the 1850s on to the eight, to 1890s, really creating an LHD is really the only way to go. And I don't think that it would preclude commercial development. If we could go back to the, um, to the uh, uh, index of, of documents, the materials. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Um, okay, thank you. I want to go to handout vision for North Pleasant BL document. Right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right there you go. That's it. Okay, so this was drawn up by Pam Rooney, who's a, you know a on the town council and uh, is a planner. And if you look under what could change, is that right now these buildings could be replaced by three story buildings with over half of their facades up close to the sidewalk to create a street edge. So today's casual gathering spaces would be covered over or replaced with carefully crafted. So basically we'd lose all sort of, it would be like the, op end of the, op the, the other side of the street. It would just be a flat straight edge. There'd be no room for like tables and, and dining and some of the things that we have now. So I, that again, makes it to me imperative that we try to do an LHD. And then I guess with the zoning, what Susanna said is that it wouldn't be as tall as the on the other side of the street, which is BG, which I guess could be 54 feet, but they could be 39 feet, but with solar displays, it would, it would still have the sensation if there was constructed of a canyon of huge, you know, straight edge, straight, you know, flat facade buildings, which I really think is to the detriment of the town. And I think the town, our brand is history. And they talk about destination Amherst. Well, that's why I think the destination, what makes it a destination. So if you scroll down here, and this is not, this is, if you scroll down this document, Ben, what Pam suggested, Pam Rooney, is that you would keep the, if we had an LHD, would keep the facades of these old 1800, you know, vintage buildings, and you would build behind them. Uh, if you scroll down even further, she has drawings. Like, you, I don't know if you can make that out. If you draw down, she has an overhead view. Have you guys seen this? I'm just curious. I have not. You no. have not. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if you had seen this or not. You can. These are all these doc. There's a longer version of this. All these documents are in this new file that I created, as well as uh, that you can peruse at your leisure. But if you continue down, continue down, continue down, continue down. Okay, here you go. So you can see. I don't know if you can see, but uh, if this you look is at ex existing and build yeah. out over here, yeah. So you would see that at that you would have the buildings, the old buildings, and then you would build build behind them, and the parking would be behind them. So I think we could argue that you know we wouldn't be curtailing commercial de uh, commercial development; we'd just be preserving our heritage. Um, and then another, I can't remember another. Oh, I went by today. Ben, did you get the two photograph, the three photographs that I sent you today? Uh, I don't think so. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, um, today I thought Amherst College is doing two. You know, the, you know, you know the building that's next. To, let me see if I can find it on my files. Hold on. Amherst College is doing it. You know the building that's next to um, the Hastings building. It has looks like kind of a church in the front. Yes, yeah. it's the Peter Pan. Uh, uh, building. Uh, 79 South Pleasant. Yeah. yeah, that's 79 South Pleasant. Well, if you look in the back of it, you know, the facade is still nice. And then they built a modern building behind it. And they're doing the same thing down the block, uh, so, same side of the street to the south. There's this brick building. I took photographs of that. Yep. So this is not unprecedented in Amherst. Um, so the real issue is it would ruffle a lot of feathers. You know, we're basically you know, the libertarians were basically, you know, for the LHD, we had people generally, except for one person in the Lincoln Sunset that wanted the LHD for, you know, to preserve their properties and preserve the neighborhood. This is a big step. This is like, you know, saying to people who don't probably don't want it, maybe the Green, it, there's three main owners. There's Kurt Shumway, Barry, and the Green Bombs, and maybe the Green Bombs would go for it, but I don't think the other two would go for it. So basically it's, it's pretty radical to consider, but on the other hand, 
I think the downtown is of a vast importance to the entire town. So I do think it's a different, since it's the business district, I do think philosophically, I don't have as big a problem uh, as I would if it had just been that strip along Kendrick Park. I, I hope I've made sense. <laughs> well, that's, uh, Steve, this is terrific. Uh, these drawings I'm, we are looking at now, did you do these? No, no, are you this kidding? I'm a, I'm a screenwriter. These are all Pam well, Rooney's. No, Pam did. Longer them. version of this. This is a shorter version. And like I said, on the if you go through the, the two files that I've created, there's one I guess Ben made that are photographs. There's another materials. There's all sorts of stuff that Susanna has written. Yeah. Yeah. There's stuff by Pam Rooney. You guys can just look at it at your leisure, but I just wanted to, to provide a digest and to bring up the, the main yeah. issues. Yeah, hmm. I guess I just wanted to point out a, th a few things that thanks steve is um so like what you're seeing on the build out side over here um while that's great like i think and a great way to use land in terms of like you know filling out existing parking areas like we can't currently do this with zoning i mean that covers way more lot area and lot coverage than is currently required uh then or sorry that is currently um accepted in the zoning bylaw there's limits on the amount of uh square footage that you can put here so it's i just don't want people to get the impression that you make a lhd and then you automatically get what you see with the build out here thing there's a lot of other work that goes into this there's, there's a reason that nothing has changed on the west side of kendrick park for you know, decades is because the zoning there is essentially locks things the way they are. You know, if 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 the zoning did permit larger buildings, then you would probably see them having come down already. But the zoning is pretty limiting in the BL and the RG along there. So I just want people to understand that yes, you know, that zoning can change that and it and it's something that the town council looked at last year. But um, and an LHD could provide some level of you know protection on those properties. But the to truly get this build out scenario here, um, then it would re also require zoning changes as well. So what about in the BL properties? You're concentrating on the RGs. Yeah, yeah, bo uh, both both cases. Yeah, there would not be a B wouldn't be able to build out uh, in the BL either. Not uh, as it currently is, not really, no. And if the uh, height limit is 39, that's uh, that's a story higher than, uh, or a story and a half perhaps higher than the uh, buildings that are there. Uh, so I think some, some of those buildings are definitely 39 feet with the uh, large roofs and stuff. Some, so, some of them is probably yeah. true, but-, yeah. but so, uh, I, I don't I, think, Steve, this is radical at all. I think this is a no brainer and this is absolutely the way to go because uh, we all want a lively downtown with lots of shops and places to go. And we want to preserve the historical uh, nature of the town vis visibility from the street. So this is the only way to do it. And having been on the zoning board, you know, the zoning board is trying to protect the town. But if there is a vision of development, which is uh, positive like that, that really is attractive and keeps the New England flavor that we need in order to have our historical town, this, this is the way to go. So I'm 100% enthusiastic that we should pursue this. And I like the idea of creating an LLC for a special one for this and pushing it through. So that's my. Well, like I said, I don't know if we, if it wasn't an extent, an expansion, we'd have to get a new study committee. And I don't know if that's politically feasible. And I, like I said, I don't know what the D I have, I'm waiting for Chris Skelly to tell me what the ramifications are. I'm not even sure what the process is for doing an expansion, but I do, but Ben, I do have to say, I was on the historical commission when the building on the corner of Halleck and South Pleasant came up and I saw the drawings, they want, they were going to knock that. They wanted to knock down the house. They said it wasn't historically significant. It would bury on that house. 
And then 12 Halleck was owned by Kurt Shumway and they were gonna combine and they were gonna build a huge office building which matched the archipelago buildings. And actually they were really sore when we did a one year demolition delay because they were saying, why can't we join the gravy train that archipelago is on? So when you say that you can't build out in the BL, the drawings that I saw for that property on 12th Halleck in North Pleasant seemed pretty darn big to me. I think uh, Ben's talking about site coverage uh, rather than volume. Okay, okay, see, I'm like, I'm over my head in this. I just, um, uh, that's why you, Bruce, that's why you're here. <laughs> but then, but then Archipelago comes with a, a plan and they ask for a waiver of this and a waiver of that. And because the town wants the commercial, um, the benefits of it, so, you know, I don't know. I, I really think that they would approve a, a massing and use of the land if it was done in this way. I can't see that they wouldn't. Hmm. I mean, it's a whole package that Pam Rooney has done in terms of rezoning. And I mean, she's a planner, I'm not. All I'm doing is introducing hmm. what has already been put out there. And I'm just trying to provide some impetus to move forward. Mm -hmm. I am not an expert on any of these, on anything, basically. I'm kind of an expert on getting the LHD because I was involved in the last one. But you know, I'm not an architect um, and I don't pretend to be, I'm not a, even a historian, I'm just someone who likes the old flavor of this town. And I'd hate to see this downtown. And I think most people in town would as well, just mm. turn into every other downtown. I think a study could be done and funded if it were part of a discreet uh, and successful grant application. Um, so I, I think Steve, you, you're, um, it's, 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 it's positively mindful that you should, uh, we should keep in mind that the, the town is uh, budgetarily stretched at the moment, particularly in the capital uh, realm. I'm not sure about the operating costs, but nonetheless, uh, when I hear what uh, the, uh, but yes, I do. But if, if, uh, if, uh, if what we would propose would be a study to consider the expansion of this uh, district, particularly with a, through a filter of, uh, business development um, and that a successful grant application could be made that would fund that, then it kind of falls outside the, uh, the constraints of, of the town because we, we're, we're asking to do this and we're, uh, well, if, if, particularly if we were to write the grant application and so forth, rather than ask uh, someone in Ben's position to do it. Um, because I actually got a grant. I, I applied when I was a, the chair of the CPA of the uh, LHD and I got a, I applied to CPA and I got some money to hire a grad student. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's an offer. Anyway, look, you guys, I posted everything. There's a ton of material up there. Hopefully Ben will add the, more, the three other photographs I put in and just look it over and, you know, look it over at your leisure and think about it that, you know, I didn't expect any kind of decision today there's a lot of yeah you know, no, that's good big thing but the 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 basic proposition that you're bringing to the table is that uh it might be that one considers making an application to expand the district but doing so by putting a uh, uh, some kind of uh context for these particular buildings that would um imagine that their future is business use rather than residential use and designing the historic district expansion with that in mind and whether that means it's a separate district or whether the the uh, there has to be additional paragraphs or sections or articles in the uh, bylaw or the uh, yeah i guess it is a bylaw um that that's a new thought to me. I haven't heard that thought expressed in the conversation that we've had over the past uh, few months about this. So I, th I think that stands a better chance of, uh, of getting the support of the commercial uh, of the, uh, of, of the, of the building owners, because we could ask them what uh, kind of um, language 
uh, heading in that direction, they could imagine supporting rather than just trying to ram it down their throats, which we probably wouldn't be successful doing. So I, I think you brought a positive uh, um, brick to the wall. It's the only way to preserve the buildings. They're going to come down at some point otherwise. I mean, they're a slate. They want they, they want them to come down now. I mean, yeah. when Jonathan Tucker, I used to see his drawings. It looked, you know, his vision of our downtown was like a shopping center in Glendale, California. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Not positive. So the the um, town is hoping to have um, invest a lot of money in kind of a designer, a, a design consultant, and that consultant is going to do a lot of studies, studies that have been done before again. Um, but that's, I mean, the time is ripe to uh, worry about the design of that part of town. It is our future, and we can't kind of lose that. So. I, I think this this might be the best way of doing it. And I think you're right, uh, Bruce. I think if you consult with those owners that own the profits, uh, profit, properties and ask them how they imagine uh, that they could work with this kind of design, keeping the old flavor and just filling in the back and making that dense, and that might really be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's food for thought. I'm done with my presentation. <laughs> Rita? I've just, at, in Stonington, Connecticut, they have an example of just that. They have uh, historical buildings, and then behind them, fitting in nicely, our new building. And it looks gorgeous. Do you have pictures of that, uh, Rita? I, I can send them to Steve. Sounds like they might be useful. To, I mean, another file or folder of constructive material in the in that kind of uh, repository that Steve's put together would be uh, examples of uh, positive development mm -hmm. of the sort we're interested in. And you don't look very happy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a planner's planning department person's nightmare, but. Oh, you know, yeah, no, it's, um, I mean, I've said all along, I think that's, uh, the LHD is just one tool in a toolbox of different ways to preserve buildings. And I'm not sure it's the most straightforward or easiest road ahead to, to try to get to it, but. I what are other ways to preserve? What are these, what's the other ways to preserve buildings? Um, I've talked about this before. Yeah. I mean, Karen alluded to the design guidelines or design standards that the town is working on and is fully funded and we're putting out an RFP, you know, in the next few weeks to do that. And you can put, and I think, you know, Northampton does this really well. They have central business architecture guidelines and that's kind of what we're doing or we're proposing is to basically say, you know, this is the standards that have to be met for design, for designing buildings in the, in the downtown. Um, is that we, binding what you're talking about? It can be, or it, you know, it doesn't have to be, but it can be. Um, and I think we're. And does it preserve the old buildings? It does. It sounds like all it does is make recommendations for new architecture, but doesn't actually preserve nothing. Yeah, I mean, that I understand the only thing that prevents old buildings from being, you know, uh, destroyed is an LHD. Is well, I guess I'm confused because yeah. you guys are talking about different things. You're talking about mm -hmm. seeing new, you're seeing new you want to see new commercial development there, but you're also saying about preserving the old building. So I think the no, the... I'm, I'm saying two. I'm saying two <laughs> things. What what I'm saying is, first of all, the existing buildings would be preserved under an LHD. Secondly, the new architecture behind the new, the old buildings would be subject to the LHD's standards in terms of saying that the new construction behind the old buildings would have to conform to the prevailing architecture that's in an LHD, just like they do in the other LHDs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying the, the architectural guidelines that we're working on can be applied to new buildings or will be applied to new buildings coming into that part of downtown. Um, and so there can be a, uh, you know, a subsection that has, you know, guidelines that are specific to the 
architecture around Kendrick Park, like, and look look the part. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I will say the current zoning basically makes it very very unlikely any of those buildings will come down. That's that's why they haven't come down already. Um, and so, I I think you know zoning is another way to prevent buildings from coming. Yeah, down. I just have to tell you anecdotally. We wanted to have those buildings along the, the perimeter of Kendrick Park and North Pleasant as part of the Lincoln Sunset North Prospect LHD. And they were just insane about not having that happen because they wanted, that's where they see downtown expanding. They see that's the only place that downtown can expand. So I, I don't agree with, you know, I just don't think they've gotten around to it yet. It's not a matter of that's why nothing's happened. I totally think it's in their their sites. Ben, I, I'd just like you to clarify for me because the building that they that had been proposed for the corner of um, mm -hmm. East, uh, East it Halleck and... yeah, yes, that I mean that was not prevented by the current zoning, and that was a pretty big building. Well, that never, yeah, I mean, that was before I started working from the town, but my understanding is that, you know, they often these developers pitch lofty buildings and then they, they come to the historical commission as their first stop because they need to know if they can remove the existing building. So I don't think that building had been designed like fully um, to actually conform to the, the zoning at that point. Um, I think it was more just a, a conceptual plan and then they wanted to you know see if they could come bring the building the existing building down and then they would kind of refine the the design further but my understanding and from what i've heard is it did not conform to the to the zoning of the bl certainly the pictures i mean they had put posted a large picture of it which they you know stood on the corner yeah it, yeah i've seen those yeah. it looked like it was pretty far along in its planning stages and from what you're saying, it couldn't have happened, but it seemed like it was going to happen. So I'm, I'm just um, puzzling whether uh, we're really as protected as you say we are. Just a note of uh, so far, I mean, these days, we're, well, now last 30 or 20 or 30 years with digital capabilities, uh, it is possible to make something that looks pretty advanced very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, so we should be we should we should be careful to be able to um, tell the difference between something that looks like it's uh, well basically in my world it's the difference between precision and accuracy right uh, it, when when i was young uh, you could easily tell the difference because everything was done by hand and uh, and people drew very quickly initially and very slowly eventually and so you could tell that th things were both less precise and less accurate at the beginning. But the trouble with computers is that they can't draw slowly. I mean, they draw at lightning speeds, of course. So everything looks sharp and neat and finished from the moment you start. And it's been a little difficult for, I think, the uh, society to come to terms with um, the way the uh, building industry and the design professions uh, technologies have uh, changed in, the, in, in, in recent decades. Excuse me, but you know, even besides the volume of that building, which I'm, I defer to you in terms of it, the architecture of it, it was just a, it was just a rectangle. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, that's 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 Ben's point, Steve. That so it that hasn't been big, developed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I do think the difference between what Steve is is proposing and what what you're saying, Ben, is that uh, we, as a historical society. We really want to preserve the old buildings and add to them and make them more useful. They don't have to be completely the same, but there's a big difference between preserving them and then knocking them down and having something that in design fits kind of into that New England style. And I think what I personally think it's really valuable to preserve them because what makes the Emily Dickinson uh, town stand out in the world is that it is an old, charming New England town, and, and that means you want to have historical 
houses that are there, not sort of pseudo um, kitschy sort of replicas of a New England town. So that's what why we want so much to have a little bit of cloud in being able to preserve them while allowing great development. We all want lots of new things in town. We all need grocery store. We all need lots of things. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I would just, I would just say to to try to frame your case that way, as opposed to um, preventing anything new. And I think you guys were talking about that. Like, pitch it as, you know, we want to preserve what's there and and ensure that, uh, you know, things that are added, you know, look look the part. So, um, I think that'll help your your case. Yeah, I think that building. Uh uh the uh, what i call the peter pan building is a good example it's a good example because it really is an elegantly uh a, a built building it's a good example because the materials that they've used are completely different from the materials of the original but still the total looks nice and it's certainly it's a good example because the work was done i think by kuhn riddle who are a local architect so it's uh, it's not as though you have to get somebody from miles away who has got some peculiar talent. Um, the peculiar talent, uh, you know, resides in town. I guess, I, yeah, I, I, just to kind of echo off that, Bruce, I think if, if whether or not you go down this route and the LHG is expanded, I think it's, especially if it is expanded, it's all the more important to develop design guidelines for the LHD specifically or adopt the ones that are being developed for downtown because I can you know if you guys really do want to support new development downtown you have to put yourself in the shoes of a developer and they're taking a huge chance on presenting a design to the local historic district that they've invested money in an architect to develop but then to not have any guarantee that it's going to go through or not and so the more that we can provide some guarantee or some some idea of a vision of what we want the space to look like i think that'll make it easier to see development in that area that that looks the way that looks like it should belong in the local historic district and is also easier for developers to work with because why yeah. is the planning department so invested in i mean first of all i never said when i made my presentation that i was opposed to new buildings i literally i said i wanted to preserve what was there, and then it would be new construction behind the old buildings. But it's always puzzled me, why is the planning department, there's something called revealed preference. Why is the planning department in Amherst so worried about developers? I mean, you just said that you that the RG has not changed because it can't change. But then you're like, then you're saying that, you know, if we do this, think about the poor developers. It just doesn't seem to, I've always noticed, I've just never understood Jonathan Tucker, I know you can't say this, Christine, that, you know, when I did my presentation before the planning board uh, for the LHD, Christine did a summation and in it, she had 20 cons for against an LHD and she had one pro, which is that it looked nice. And then I, Marianne Adams got back to her and said, what is this? And I actually sent Christine the handbook on LHDs, which had 30 lists of things that were pro good about an LHD. So I just don't, you, I don't understand this, this orientation about the planning board. Um, I mean, the planning department always worrying about the developers. And it's, uh, it just makes me crazy. I'm sorry. Uh, hmm. I think, uh, I didn't know that uh, one's always worried. That may be true, maybe more, maybe more worried than necessary but certainly one has to have some sense of uh, uh, what that force is and how it operates mm -hmm. um but uh i mean my uh i know we're being recorded and this is all nice and public and everything but we, we all seem to be fairly comfortable with each other and with the world around us and my uh beef for years with uh uh, the town of Amherst was that the uh, the property owners were uh, moribund when it came to uh, uh, initiative, energy, and imagination. 
and that we uh, found that all of the, you know these properties along North Pleasant Street, nothing ever happened to them. They were ugly and and uh, tatty and had little bits and pieces done to them. And I just uh, when I first arrived here forty years ago. Uh, I thought, why the hell is this town so decrepit looking? Because uh, basically the, the university, when it, uh, uh, this was a phrase I think I developed when I was chair of the master planning uh, thing 20 years ago, that the uh, university in the 60s and early 70s, when, it, when, when the state decided to expand the, camp, the Amherst uh, campuses, the flagship campus, it, it suddenly became like a giant vacuum cleaner sucking development down North Pleasant Street. Um, and you had all of these uh, buildings with little skirts. Uh, and, and so I, I thought that uh, wouldn't it be lovely if uh, if the uh, development community and the build, uh, commercial property owners in Amherst uh, developed a little bit of imagination and a little bit of spirit and, and actually started doing something, building new buildings in the place of the old ones in the upper end of North Pleasant Street, uh, where it still is. I mean, we're basically where Judy's is, where Barcelona's is, where the typewriter shop is, where all of those um, sad little structures are located. And so to some extent, I thought when up Kelliger arrived, uh, oh, looks like somebody, that was when that first white building went up. I said, well, it looks like maybe change is upon us. And I had a certain level of optimism associated with that. So. Um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just hold with my uh, initial uh, observation of, of what my problem with the, uh, the the town is, which is that too many of the property owners lack imagination and, and the willingness to um, move off their uh, rental income uh, earning backsides and, and do something better. <laughs> um, that's not really got anything much to do with what we're talking about, I suppose. I would like to join in on that because there's like new buildings in Northampton. There's one affordable housing complex on King Street, which is very contextual. Uh, and there's also even down, even in South Hadley, the complex that Mount Holyoke paid for across the street from their campus. To me, that's very contextual. Um, you know, the one I'm talking about. So it's not against I know, you know, but I know what you're talking about. I know there are other buildings that that uh, where where it's a big where, white complex. It's where the yeah. movie theater is, and obviously oh oh that yes, yeah, that's owned that by that that's owned by uh, Mount Holyoke, and they mm. did a good job of like creating something, you know, that's context that I that I consider contextual. I'm not an architect, mm. but um, and I just never understood, and I brought this up many times in many forms, you know, about why can't we do that? And then I get like stuff like. Well, taste is subjective, you know, that we think that the new buildings like the new archipelago buildings are like, you know, really nice. Yeah. So you can't win. So anyway, well, I, I think, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I know I'm like, uh, I think uh, Amherst had a, 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 an early 60s and 70s uh, experience with some new buildings. Uh, some of them are the, the two school buildings, which were in the process of tearing down because they're so awful. But the one that uh, and my wife was born in town and grew up here, and uh, so I get a, a lot of this, you know, of uh, of the of the evolution through the fifties, sixties, and seventies. Uh, and that bank on the corner has done a very large, uh, uh, is, is is very has got a very large share of the blame for why folks in this town are skittish when it comes to having new buildings built in their in their in their centre. And I think the Tucker Taft building, which was built by the firm that I was working for at the time, uh, Gill and Kuhn, Riddle and Gray, it was called then. And I, I think that's a clumsy building and it's right up in town, right next to the fire station. And of course, CPS was never had any pretensions being anything other than a, um, a, a cheap money pit. And then the shops further on down, uh, it is so, there's so little of design quality uh, in uh, along North Pleasant Street, it's really depressing. Uh, and so the idea that we could actually try and do something, it seems as we've uh, almost lost the plot on that. And I would love, so we, uh, uh, I don't know what it is about uh, the town other than what I've already said, but it, it's, 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 it's not um, an inspiring place um, to visit if you're, if you, if you I mean, 
the first thing we could do would be to narrow North Pleasant Street so that the uh, sidewalk, particularly on the east side, would be two or three times as wide as it is. And we, um, and we give uh, much less real estate to cars and turning lanes and all this sort of stuff. Um, so I, I would, uh, and this is again, way outside our purview particularly, but it, it's, it's not unrelated because we're part of a, a thoughtful process that's trying to direct and influence uh, um, buildings in town, but uh, particularly in the center, I think we're starting from so far in the center and north of Main and Amity Street, we're starting uh, so far back from the, you know, the, the mark, so to speak. We're handicapped hugely in what's there. And I don't know exactly why that is other than what I've already mentioned, but it's a, it is a big challenge for the town, I think, to come to terms with the, uh, the, 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 the dross that we have uh, downtown. I'll probably get thrown off the planning board for this, Ben. I... <laughs> uh, well, anyway, think about it. I'm willing to take the heat if you guys want to move forward, but it, it will be a lot of heat. And there's lots of nuts and bolts in terms of, you know, maybe making a deal, you know, to make it enticing for the developers. But anyway, think about it. And there's a lot of material that I posted. Mm. And, you know, let's talk about it. You know, just to add, um, the in Germany, the development for the, the towns that had money early on was pretty awful because they knocked everything down that was a little bit destroyed and they built what was modern at that time. And the good thing about East Berlin is that there was no money and we've come around to realizing that the historical things are where people feel the most comfortable. And so, and when something gets renovated there, the museum, it's exactly what Steve said. There's usually the oldest preserved and then that really glitzy modern glass structure gets attached to it a little bit like you know in the Louvre where you have that glass thing and that's the kind of thing I think we would be we're happy allowing we just want not to knock down and if there's a shabby building like CBS yes we we want to knock it down but I think we, we we'd be selective and uh, preserve what's what's there and try to add to it. Mm -hmm. And if, do we, are we uh, Judith, are we, are we uh, um, do we have a, 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 do we have some, some business to we do? We have here? something else. Uh, we have staff transition, which I guess is uh, Ben. Cool. Yeah, you may have all <laughs> seen my email. Thanks, Judy. Um, that uh, I actually have accepted a job elsewhere. Um, I'm going to be working for the State Department of Transportation. And uh, so actually this will be my last local yeah. historic district commission meeting. Um, my last day with the town is on uh, Thursday of this week. So wow. it's, a, it's a quick- <laughs> Congratulations. Quick, yeah, yeah, thank you. So it's the uh, mass, mass DOT office in uh, Northampton. So I'll be able to stay, stay local, which is nice. Oh, nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still a little bit surreal. And um, just wanted to say for, for those I've just met, um, uh, it's been nice working with you for the past few or month or so hours. and, and uh, getting work at, well, seeing through the interview process and all that. And for the folks who have been on the commission longer, it's been really nice working with you guys for the past uh, I guess two and a half years at this point. And um, definitely wish you all the best with the district. And, um, and uh, I will say Nate Malloy, um, who's the senior planner, who most of you know, um, will be, kind of stepping in as the staff liaison for the committee um, until a replacement is hired up and, and, and trained up and everything. Um, so for, uh, so yeah, Nate, uh, we have the next meeting scheduled, I think for December 12th, I think it was. Um, so yeah. Nate, Nate will help coordinate that um, and be in touch with, uh, with you guys at that, at that point. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know and um, well, good luck. Yeah, I appreciate Thank it. You so Thank much. you. Good luck, man. Yeah, we're going to miss you. You've been so great to work with. You've been, it just feels good to have you on our side, and we're going to miss you. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it.
Hopefully he'll help us get some great transportation out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Train to Boston. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I think I'm mostly going to be doing roadway projects, but um, I know we we do oversee some of the the transit stuff, and yeah, that'll be that'll be a hot hot topic issue, I'm sure. Put some protected bike trails on those roads. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, anything, anything else? There's there's one item that you I think mentioned last week or last meeting about the pamphlet. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um. So one question I had because I thought you had mentioned solar panels were part of the exclusions or maybe only if they were on the roof or something. But anyways, there's no mention of solar panels okay. in the examples, and I wasn't sure um, if that was new or if I misheard that it's not part of exclusions. Oh yeah, yeah. No, thanks for pointing that out. Um. Yeah, that may have just been a, been an omission. I know. Uh, yeah, so solar panels, as long as they're laid flat on the roof, um, are excluded from from review by the local historic district. So we should. Yeah, I think that'd be great to add to it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, prob <laughs> that's probably one one of the more common things that do come in, and we are able to just move it is along. It, is it laid flat, or is it if they're in can if they're invisible from the street? Oh yeah, if they're not visible from the street, then it's not definitely not um, yeah okay. reviewable. But if they are visible and they're on the roof, and if they're laid flat, it's excluded. Okay. So, yes, it'd kind of be hard to imagine if they're flat on the roof that you would be able to see them from the street. Yeah. Unless it was a building that was dug into a site and you could see them on the uphill side or something like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that probably doesn't apply to any street in our district. Um, okay, I'll make a note of that, Nicole. I have the copy up right here. I'll just um, all right, and then any unanticipated items? Anybody have any? Okay, I I actually have one to. I'm letting you know that um, this is going to be my last meeting, as mm -hmm. well. So I've decided to um, step off the um, commission. So, but it's been lovely working with you all. So. Oh, Judy, so we have to find a new chair first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you can think of who you want to be the new chair. So. Yeah, and I think I'll talk to Nate. I think um, that that should be like a formal agenda item and we can put that on the agenda for the December 12th uh, meeting, probably first on the agenda. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if folks want to give that some thought, and I only have a few more days with the town, but if you are interested and want to learn more about it, you can feel free to email me um, and we can talk about it then. Um, but uh, but yeah, so we'll talk, we, oh, I'll talk to Nate and you guys can talk about that on December 12th. <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Well, anybody else have any? We don't have any public comments. Because no we, public comment. We have no public. All right. so. That's why I've been talking the way I've been talking. Um, th that being the case, uh, perhaps a motion to adjourn is in order. Second. <laughs> yeah, Nancy did that. Thank you. Shall we vote by pushing the red button? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm ready. Thank you all. I'll Thank see you, you next time. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.